Hi, and welcome into my studio. I'm Janice, a um, painter and an advocate of keeping sketchbooks. I um, want to thank you for stopping by, and um, I'd like to share some basic information about maintaining a sketchbook, um, the history that's involved in that, and some of the basic and primary mediums that you can incorporate um, and use in a historical manner. So in today's ske uh, sketchbook uh, discussion, let's start with some of the products that I might uh, make suggestion. Um, again, if we go back and step into uh, a bit of history, I've got a book here from uh, Rembrandt Drawings. And I wanted to just kind of recap what some of the former artists have done in their investigation to develop their own body of work. Um, and in doing so, I'm going to share just some imagery from this particular book, but I'll also link some other artists so that you can see the manner in which they worked. Um, so if we step away from just using um, pencils, which in a previous video, I've uh, touched upon um, any number of pencils, which are your basic HB to um, the B to the um, H pencils, and giving you a full assortment of pencils. Um, today, I wanted to address uh, some other mediums that um, are of historical consequence. So, um, let me show you this image, um, and this was created using Conte Crayon. Um, um, there was a uh, man with the last name of Conte in the 1700s who actually developed this um, uh, stick um, or chalk, and the Conte Crayon comes in um, at least now it does, um, in a full assortment of different colors, ranging from um, black, white, to your sort of basic deep brown, to sanguine, and then there are some other colors in between. Now in the work by um, Rembrandt in front of us, um, we can go from this linear, type of representation to the wash. So we've got a broad spectrum to, in which to use this um, crayon. It comes with a square kind of body to it. So I can use it with the integrity intact, or if I wanted, um, although it's somewhat brittle, I could try to manipulate the end of that using a single edge razor blade. Um, so this gives us a nice, kind of broad range of brown, sepia tones um, in this particular drawing. In this, um, I've got the black uh, primarily used here. And what he does is um, use the paper and the image as a um, within the picture plane here, meaning that this is a rectangle, the proportion is kind of delineated. I've got the scale that I want, this figure. I've got um, the emphasis on the darks and lights without uh, specifically drawing attention to each toe or finger. Um, I've got kind of a general sensibility about the image um, in front of me. So that's um, using the Conte crayon, I can do that in a very immediate and concise way. Here I've used the sanguine color and he's limited um, that color as opposed to this where I, he must have broke down and used washes within the context of the crayon. Um, here, I can use uh, smearing, whether it's directly from the pencil, my finger, or another cloth, 
But again, I'm using this to define space, shape, uh, movement, scale. And um, if I want to kind of uh, develop a context of figures, I can use these uh, figures, whether individual, where I'm going to study the pose and work out what um, um, stance that I might want the figure to be at so that if it's not this, I can use a more upright figure. And that way I have the ability to go back, refer to my figures, and then use that in the context of my work. So this is a really um, terrific book to reference. Um, these drawings are um, fairly small. Um, a lot of them are true to size, so you can see that there's a lot of information even in the context of a small drawing. And again, I'll link some other artists below who also used um, similar um, mediums, meaning the Conte and the Indie Ink, to uh, utilize sketching. So if we jump back to the Conte crayon, I've got these sticks in front of me, and they do come in uh, some other sort of uh, uh, earthy tones, values. And these are um, powdered graphite, or um, in the case of white, they're like made out of chalk and titanium dioxide. Um, they've got a simple binder, and they can also consist of uh, clay within this. So it's going to be a tad brittle, and um, it can be um, used as a um, again, on its side or on the nib, which we'll get into. Just wanted to show you that um, the, um, if I'm going to use even a powder in the um, charcoal, I can actually use, um, in the case here, I use, I put in some turp and some other oil in here so that I could use this first on my canvas and then go back and uh, paint over that. Uh, but it becomes a very, very rich, dense black. So it's really as dark as you can go for a true black. Um, so these are, um, again, available in the full range and they do start out as the powder and then they are, again, used with binders. Um, the other product I wanted to mention today are inks. So I've got um, Bombay here and I've got kind of a uh, store brand India ink. Um, and I did notice a difference when I'm using the two different products. There's a richer density to this particular ink um, as I described in you know what I sort of mixed up with my powder here. Um, it dries to a really dense, uh, dark, um, opaque product, whereas this was a little bit on the watered down side. So it depends what direction that you want to go in. Obviously, there's a, a value of savings here. Um, and so um, in terms of it holding its light fastness, I would suspect that um, this product might be superior, but I haven't actually tested the two out side by side, which I could ultimately do um, in natural daylight. Um, now these inks do come in, again, a full assortment of inks similar to what I might have with my Conti crayon. And the other ink that I'm using here is um, a brown and it's called Walnut. Um, this one does not have the dropper so I'm going to open it up and you can see from here it's like a rich golden brown. So it's very much in keeping with the authenticity of the masters. So um, this can be used as a light wash similar to um, maybe watercolor and then I can intensify that by after letting it dry to go over and just do another wash. Um, it's a really beautiful color, and I can also link this below. Um, 
the value I guess that you might have with this dropper is that I can work directly onto my paper surface with the dropper itself or I can apply it directly into um, what I'd like to you know share with you is the bamboo pen so um, this pen is very economical to purchase um, it comes in different um, kind of uh, nibs. Um, this is medium. This, I think, was soft. Um, it's a little wider here at the tip. And to fill this, I can simply take my dropper, get it into the valley here. It's like a little gutter. I can fill that up, which we'll do in a minute, and then I can write with that. Um, I can achieve, you know, something very similar with using this open but I have the possibility of course of spilling this and I've got to be a bit more careful. Um, I'm going to dip my pen in there, do my thing, um, but then again if I'm working between mediums I could sort of contaminate the uh, integrity of the color by doing that. Um, so I've got um, my bamboo pens and these are made out of uh, real bamboo um, they've been chiseled and they have um, this kind of writing nib similar to what a calligrapher might have used. Um, so I can get kind of a very um, pointed edge. And if I don't want to use this or if I want to um, also pick up some other pens, there are different bodies to pens uh, which are made of bamboo or other and they have interchangeable nibs similar to what a calligrapher might use and then I can also use my inks with that type of a product. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is if I'm going to do a wash for instance um, I might want to include you know a variety of brushes um, so you might have a pick on what your favorite is for your um, brush but I always keep um, a vessel full of water and um, I really like working with a round tip. Um, I can also link a visual so that you understand the different uh, types of brush heads there are. And again, this is a sable brush, so it's a, it's a much better quality than a synthetic for me. I really like the, um, it's just really soft. It's, it really flows, it's uh, very, um, kind of it gives you the movement um, without so much structure. So um, I can use it with barely any um, surface pressure where I'm sort of just dragging this or I can go into there and I can sort of scrub more diligently with the side of it, the tip of it to get more surface coverage. Um, there are a multitude of other brushes here which um, I can do in a future video. We have fan brushes, we have a flat head, we've got um, filberts, and I can you know, do that in a later video for additional discussion. So I've got my, my inks and I've got a pen and I've got Conti crayon. So all in all, I've got three things here and I'm pretty portable. Um, so now we need something to write on. So um, I've got in front of me two different books. One is a um, super deluxe, it says uh, sketchbook. It's heavyweight drawing paper made for wet to dry media. And um, this is natural white. Um, I would have to say that the quality of paper in this particular book is really outstanding to me. Um, this was just uh, pencil, um, more pencil of figures, and I just wanted to show you uh, as a comparison of the paper. Again, usually on the front of the book it'll give you the weight for the gauge of paper. So um, this particular sheet if I um, draw on this, I'm not going to see really too much imagery on the other side of this. And if I, um, if I use pastel, 
I can still use the other side. I've mounted things in here. Um, I've used watercolor and the integrity of the sheet of paper on the other side is really pretty amazing. So I can use both front and back of this, making it a little bit more economical than just using the one side. But again, if you just wanna use the right hand sheet for your book, um, that's fine too. But in terms of the paper color, I did want to show you that um, I picked up this other book. This happens to be a Canson uh, mixed media. It indicates that I can also use wet to dry media. Um, but I did want to just show you a comparison of the color of the paper. So side by side, um, you know, there's a broad spectrum of whites. It depends what you might want to use for your paper. Um, you know, a lot of the master drawings were not as white as this. Um, this has been cleaned by a paper manufacturer to be this white. This is a softer white and you might find, you know, a whole plethora of papers in between. Um, so whatever's your thing. I mean, I do like, again, using the spiral book because um, I can leave it open this way or, you know, so I allow the freedom of my arm to move um, as opposed to, you know, having a bound book, which I don't have the option to open and close as easily. Um, and I like to have a couple books simultaneously because again with the inks I might have to let something sit before I can uh, you know move to my next page and advance so that the drawing is drier and the pools of liquid have um, kind of set within the uh, paper itself so um, just wanted to show you for instance um, I did this really fast um, and I wanted to show you um, this sketch and then we can move on to something which I'll display, um, do a little um, example in front of us. But if I take my pen and I've dipped it into my ink and I'm using the tip of this and I'm just moving this edge around, I'm working primarily on composition how this figure, this element is going to work within the horizontal uh, plane. Um, I want to know and re be able to refer to what size do I want this figure? Does this figure, do I want to emphasize the full structure? Do I want to just focus on the head? Um, what is it that I want to delineate in this quick gestural type of imagery? So. By using just this one single color, I can get a sense of um, light to dark even within that and just quick movement, quick um, strokes, very gestural. I'm not really, um, you know, accurately and atomically um, breaking down the figure here, but um, emphasizing this type of um, silhouette or structure of the figure in its integrity. So um, I'm not really concerned or devoted to doing, you know, each little nuance of the figure. So if we get into the, um, to a formal example, I want to show you how it is that I fill up the pen. So again, I'm going to take the stopper here and I'm going to pinch it. And what that does, it, it brings up with suction the ink into this. I'm going to drop it into my little galley here. Um, and you can see that just by tipping this, um, the pool of liquid will just kind of fall out. So I've got to get comfortable with how I want to release this from the pen itself. And that might take you some time, 
but between learning and um, getting comfortable with each type of product, there's a learning curve. So um, I can, and see one, once it's empty, it really, you know, releases. I can go back to that pool of liquid and I can drag and move my pen around. I can fill it up again. And I can, of course I'm doing this upside down so it's a little harder, but I can get a varying degree of color just from the one ink. Now, I can go back after this is dry into my Conte sticks and include shadow. I can use the side of this, like chisel here, and I can allow the Conte just to work as is. I can use my fingers to soften it. I could use a rag, a cloth. I can actually use a uh, brush if I had a flat uh, brush and I can um, use it dry to drag that. I can take my water and find out a brush and I can try to wet this surface and I'm using this to go into here and you know sketch. Now these two uh, colors can begin to blend and I can do a drawing, you know, based on this here, whether it's an abstract or something that I'm kind of looking to, but I can get a full range of light to dark. I can rinse my brush out drag and, and continue to soften um, the density of this color. So very much acting like a watercolor. But the simplicity of color is what makes it very authentic to um, the masters who have come before us and, and um, the approach. And it allows me to concentrate on the rendering itself, not getting carried away with the color. It's more about the formalities, but um, here it's, you know, within a book that it, it, it's, this paper's really disposable. So I'm not getting hung up on, on um, too much, uh, or, you know, the, um, trying to produce a masterpiece that somebody before me, you know, has, accomplished in their lifetime. I can just take this step by step, develop my level of uh, skills and approach it in a more um, personal and spontaneous manner. And if I don't like this, of course, I can toss it. I can go back with, with uh, taking a sheet of this. I can glue it with, um, of course, Elmer's glue. I can take a swatch of paper and just glue it onto a spot I didn't like, recolorize that, and you would never know that there was an error, you know, in that spot. I can also use um, a multitude of other liquid adhesives. I could use a glue stick. I can go in here, and if I wanted a pop of color or some other craft paper or whatever it might be, I can take that and glue it on when it's dry. So. This allows me a full range of uh, possibility. And of course, I can go back to a traditional pencil, whether that's first where I'm building this uh, imagery or after I've blocked in what I want to um, showcase. So I can either uh, render these um, using, um, you know, real life, uh, still lifes, people, um, I can work from my head, I can work of course from the masters, I can render what they've done, I can try to learn about um, form and, and all those facets of uh, structure from um, modern masters and all this by just using primarily 
you know, a, a really inexpensive bamboo pen, some ink, and a, a couple of um, Conte crayons. And these, by the way, do come in, um, let's say, a pack of four where they have this, this assortment. So you, you don't even have to get this many sets. Um, you can get, comes in white, black, and the brown tones, um, so that, you know, that's really easy to pick up. And, um, and again, once this dries, I can go back into it. Um, but these are just quick studies. They're not um, made to be uh, pressure on yourself. They're just ways to engage in opportunities that allow you to grow from putting something down on the paper. Like maybe you'll learn something from this. You can take that now into larger paintings and it gives you the flexibility and freedom to refer to this or to say, um, you know, you really like this linear movement and that's something that you would not have learned from these skills here. You can now apply it um, into your new work. So, um, you know, it's really, a lot to learn from something uh, which is such a functional and um, easy opportunity. Um, and again, I'll put some links below of some other artists who have used these particular uh, mediums. Um, you can look those over. They each have their own style, which is unique to them. Some of them have a really, you know, quick, um, angular manner in which they see the subject and they're not really going after the nuances of the again you know each body part but they they want to build structure and they continue to build onto that so each artist that i'll include has a strength unique to themselves and um, their work and that's what makes it exciting so um until next time, I will see you again in the studio. If you found this valuable, please take a moment to give me a thumbs up and subscribe.